Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Daska and welcome back to I Could Do That DIY for another custom Monster High doll. Today we're mashing up a few different dolls. Let's get into it. Step 1. Doll Prep So for today's doll we're using this Frankenstein Great Scary Reef Body. I was originally planning on using this Gorgon Head, but I decided not to use it later on. We are going to be using these Rochelle ears to add on to the head, but not this head. This doll is really inspired by eels and other deep sea creatures, as well as Ursula and Flotsam and Jetson. So I'm going to start by spray painting the body with this Tamiya color for plastic spray paint in black. Um, I'm not going to be doing the head, I'm just going to be doing the body. But first I'm going to start by coloring the joints with this black sharpie just to help from wear later on. I did sand the body before this, but yeah, after that's all done, I'm going to spray paint the body. So here's the body after it's been spray painted black, it looks really great, but once I saw the body, I got to thinking that maybe the head's not right. So here's the first head, looks pretty good, but I also remembered I already have a black head that I haven't used from the Lily the Demon customization when I took its body. But before I decide once and for all, I have to clean this face and get rid of the hair. So I'm going to grab my pure acetone and remove the existing face up. I'm just going to use a piece of paper towel and some q-tips. After that, I'm going to chop all this hair off with a pair of scissors. Okay, so face comparison time. Here's this one, and here's that one. Mm, here's this one. And here's that one. This one, that one. This one. Mm, I think I like this one, yeah. Let's do that one. All right, let's harvest these ears from Rochelle. So I'm just gonna grab my razor blade and chop them off. Be very careful when you do this. After I've collected these ears, I'm going to set the head aside for another project and get ready for sculpting. Step 2. Sculpting So here is the fully prepped head. I went ahead and removed the hair off screen. Now let's get ready for sculpting. Here's those ears. I think I'm going to put them here and make like deep sea ears. So I'm going to prep the ears by putting a little armature wire and just stab it in. I'm going to heat the wire up a little bit and melt it in, and then glue it in. After I have both ears prepped, I'm going to go ahead and place them. I'm just going to stab them into place, and then add some super glue to place them. Yep, that looks great. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the other side, and get back to you. Alright, both ears are in the head securely, but I think the head needs a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add something else. Here is this mermaid monster high doll, I forget his name, but his fin looks like a betta fish and I love it. So we're going to go ahead and steal it and put it in this doll. So I'm going to grab my razor blade and cut it out. Then I'm going to slash the center of the head just enough for the fin to fit in jam it into place, and then glue it into place. After that's all dry, I'm going to put the head back on the body. Then it's time for actual sculpting. I'm going to grab my epoxy sculpt and mix equal parts with gloves and start sculpting. I'm just going to blend these parts into the body. For tools today, I'm going to use these metal tools I picked up, they're really helpful, and my metal awl. I'm just going to put some on the ear and start blending it in. And also the fin too. I'm just going to put it in and kind of add some lines to kind of blend it in, and then smooth it back with my finger, take some off, and do the same thing again. So for this character, I picture her ears being a very important feature for her. She is going to be a deep sea creature, so even though she has six eyes, she's blind. 
She is also psychic, so with the combination of echolocation and being psychic, she can get around just fine. After I set that aside and let that cure for a day, I'm going to go back and add a little bit more detail to the ear and to the body. So the Frankie sign body had a bolt initially on the neck and to help cover up that hole that was there, I'm going to put some gills. So I'm just going to sculpt some gills. Alright, so she's looking pretty good. Here she is. Here are the gills, here are the ears, here's the fin. Yeah, she looks great. But she needs more. So let's add a ruffle that was an accessory, I think, on an Ever After Idol to the body as a body fin. I think that'll look really cool. So let's go ahead and glue that into place and start sculpting into place as well. So it's the same thing as the other parts. I'm just going to glue it into place, wait for it to dry, and then add some epoxy sculpt. Then I'm going to blend it into the body with my tools. So because she is a deep sea creature, let's add some aerial-esque shells to the bust. I'm going to put a little triangle of epoxy sculpt on the bust, and then start sculpting it into a shell shape. I'm just going to add a little scallop to the edge and some striations along the top of the shell. And add the little fin thingy to the bottom of the shell. I know it's not called a fin, but it looks like a fin. I'm going to add some texture to the body fin and then I'm going to do the other shell off screen. I'm also going to add some spines to the body fin as well. Once I'm happy with all my sculpting, I'm going to set that aside to cure for 24 hours, then it's on to the next step. Step 3. Face Up Prep Since we are painting the head and the body at the same time, there isn't much face up prep today. We're going to be tying a piece of string in this little groove so I can hold onto something while I spray my layers of Mr. Super Clear. After that's all tied, I'm going to do two layers of Mr. Super Clear as a base. Step 4. Face Up So to start the face up, we're going to base things out with a white acrylic paint. We're going to do the fins and some other places. This just helps color show up later on. So for her overall color scheme, I'm thinking of doing something based off of Ursula and Flotsam and Jetsam. I'm thinking very Poor Unfortunate Souls, where she's very illuminated by the cauldron in pinks and like purples. It looks really cool. After that's all based out, we're going to stipple in some white highlights as well. Eels are actually very spotty and have lots of different designs, so yeah, let's try to mimic that. I'm going to do a general body speckle and then do more isolated speckling in the high points so it looks like she's illuminated. Then I'm just going to brush on a little bit more texture and kind of dab around with my paper towel and get this really textural. So here it is all dry, it's looking pretty good. Let's start working on this with some pastels. I'm going to grab my black and white pastel and start contouring the body and highlighting the body. I'm going to highlight the front of the face and the body as well as contouring the fins into the body and the sculpted points that are still grey into the black.
All right, that's looking pretty good. Now let's add some color with some purple pan pastel. I'm blending the black and the white with the purple. Alright, now that we've colored with purple, let's start blending into the purple with pink. We're going over most of the highlighted area with a light pink pan pastel. And blending with some more purple. We're also giving the gills a light pink base. And adding some more light pink to the fin as well. The fin was kind of spotty, so I painted it with some white acrylic off screen. So let's just continue building up color and dimension. After I get a good base on my body, I'm going to move on to my watercolor pencils and sketch out the initial eye shape. Using a dark purple, I'm going to start by sketching out the left eye and then move on to the right eye. I definitely make mistakes and erase as I go. And yes, we are outlining all six eyes. After that, I'm going to move on to the lips. Using a hot pink watercolor pencil, I'm going to start on the outside of the lip and blend it into the inside of the lip with a Q-tip. Then I'm going to add various shades of pink and blend those as well. Cool, those are looking pretty good. Now let's color in her eyes with the light lavender watercolor pencil. I think the light lavender eyes will look good with her overall color scheme. Even though she is blind, I do want her eyes to look like she's psychic and telekinetic. So I really think the light lavender really helps with this. Now I'm going to be giving all of her eyes a hot pink eyeshadow. It's not actually eyeshadow, it's pastels. Um, and I'm also adding some to the lips and to the shelves. Then I'm going to add some more highlight to the face with some light pink pastels. Using my white watercolor pencil, I'm going to add some highlight to the nose and blend it out with a Q-tip. Now I'm going to continue building up that color with my purple and my light pink pastels. Then I'm going to grab some black pastel and contour the face a little bit more. Of 
Okay, grabbing my light lavender watercolor pencil, we're going to continue to build up the color in all six eyes. Then I'm going to add some freckles in the same color. After that, I'm going to highlight the inner eyelid with a white watercolor pencil. And some more nose highlight as well. I'm also adding some to the center of the lip and boning out some pink. This really adds some dimension to the lip. Then I'm going to grab my black watercolor pencil and start aligning the eye and the eyelids. Of course, repeating the process for all six eyes. I'm also going to go into the nostril a little bit as well. Then I'm going to highlight the inner eyelid of all six eyes with my white pastel. And then intensify this hot pink and kind of wrap it around the bottom side of the eye as well. And while I'm using the hot pink, add more color to the lips and to the shells. Now I'm blushing in a medium pink on the cheeks and in between the purple and the pink. After that, let's add more highlight to the face with some white pastel. Let's also go ahead and add some more body highlight. Like I mentioned before, eels have a lot of different spots and different patterns. So I'm going to be adding some black spots to this with some black acrylic paint. This eel is pretty cool. It's also how I got the inspiration for the light lavender iris. He looks kind of spooky and psychic. Alright, let's add some definition to all these irises with a dark purple and a light lavender pastel. Now I'm using some hot pink pastel on the eyeshadow and really wrapping around the eye and saturating it. Then I'm going to redefine the eye line with some black watercolor pencil. and highlight all of the eyelids with some white watercolor pencil. And now I'm going to continue to build color and highlight with my watercolor pencils and my pastels. And now I'm really focusing in on these gills with my light pink watercolor pencil. On the next layer, I'm going to start working on her irises with a white watercolor pencil. I'm going to sketch in the general eye shape and the pupil. After that, I'm going to go over everything with my light lavender pastel to kind of haze out the eye. And shade it a little bit with my dark purple pastel. Then I'm going to go over most of the body with this color shift changing powder. It goes from like a purpley pink to this tealy green. It's really cool.
On the next layer, I'm going to continue to build up the white outline and the eye. Then we're going to give the eye some more definition with some pastels. We're going to go in with a light lavender and shade the top with a black pastel. Let's also continue to build up that highlight in the inner eyelid and build up the black and the hot pink of the eye as well. This color shift powder is normally used for resin. It's uh, kind of subtle, it's really cool though, so let's continue to build it up. That's looking really cool. Ah, I love the effect. Let's continue to work on these eyes a little bit more. I'm going to start with my white watercolor pencil and then re-outline the entire eye with my black watercolor pencil. I'll do the main eyes completely in black and for the top four, I'll use a dark purple for the inner eye. Then I'm going to go over the entire eye with my white watercolor pencil and re-highlight the top of the eyelids the nose, and the lips. Now it's time to do the bottom lashes. Using a very sharp black watercolor pencil, I'm going to start on the outer eyelid and work my way towards the center. Feel free to erase and correct as you go. I start large and get smaller as I work my way in. Then I'm also going to do the little four eyes above that. They're going to get upper eyelashes as well. On the next layer, we're going to be adding some catch lights to the eyes with some white acrylic paint. And to finish her off, I'm going to add a little glare to the lip. Step 5. Hair. So she is getting hair. She's getting some light pink wefts. Um, I created them off screen. We're going to be gluing them on with some liquid fusion. We're going to start with the hairline and yeah, I'll get back to you after the hairline. So here is most of the hairline, I'm going to continue off screen and film the rest. Then it's just styling and finishing touches. Step 6, finishing touches. So here is the finished hair, looks pretty good. We're going to be doing some pigtails today. So let's go ahead and style this. We're going to be using some embroidery floss and tying little bows. So I'm going to start with a piece that's way too long and just tie it around and tie a bow. I'm also using a clean toothbrush and water to help style it as I go. Before I get too crazy and mess up this face, I'm going to pad the face with a towel. Alright, that looks really cute. Let's just give this a trim and do the other side. That looks adorable. I'm really loving the yarn hair because it has this fluffy, weightless quality that really looks like it's underwater. So for added sparkle, we're going to be adding more dots to the body with the strike and fly glaze. 
This stuff is really cool and it has this really awesome color shift quality to it, much like the resin powder that we used earlier. I'm going to add some dragonfly glaze to some of the spines and the edges of the fins as well. So here's the body after it's all dry. It looks really great. I'm loving the effect it's getting, but it's not sparkly enough. Let's add some crystals. I got some Swarovski crystals because they're super sparkly and I'm just going to glue them on with some bead gel. We're going to sprinkle them all over the body. I'm just going to add a little speck of glue and then grab my little sticky tweezers, grab a crystal, kind of just stick it on. Then I'm just going to continue on and go all over. And while I do that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest projects. I'll be doing more doll customizations and other projects in the future, so keep up to date. Also, feel free to give me a follow on Instagram at icouldothat.diy and at Kawaii Dollies. Kawaii Dollies Instagram is a little bit more doll focused and has all of my old work if you want to check it out. So we're just going to continue on until I use up all of my crystals. Here she is, wow, she looks so sparkly, I love it so much. Alright, let's move on to the lashes. Using some fake lashes and some Elmer's glue wall, I'm going to cut the lashes to length and form them to shape. Then I'm going to add a bead of glue to the back of the lash and plop it on. I'll mess around with it for a while until I like the position. Then I'll move on to the other side. I'm using a pin to get the lash in a good spot and wipe away any excess glue. Be sure to be very careful when you do this because you don't want to mess up your face up. Now that both lashes are on and dry, it's time to add some gloss. We're going to be glossing all six eyes and the lips. After that's all painted on, I'm going to set that aside to dry. So for the final finishing touch, we're going to be giving her a bow around the neck. I really want this bow to have a weightless water quality, like it's floating around. So we're going to be positioning it with glue later on. I'm going to tie it around the neck and get into place and then just brush on some Elmer's glue wall, let it dry and then do the other side. After that's completely dry, there's only one more thing left to do. Step 7. Doll photo shoot. So here she is. Here's the finished result. I'm really happy with how she turned out. I think she looks really beautiful. The color shift quality and the sparkle is really extra and I'm just dying for it. She definitely has a mysterious and psychic quality to her. So her name is Celine, Deep Sea Psychic. She kind of looks like Ursula and Flotsam and Jetson was combined into one person. It's really awesome, I'm really happy with it. The hair and the bows really add this weightless quality to her and she really looks like she's floating in water. The highlights definitely make her look like she's being illuminated by a cauldron maybe, or just some deep sea divers. I've been trying really hard to push myself and give you new content weekly, but sometimes these dolls can take longer than that, so it might be a little bit more of a delay between these dolls and several weekly videos. I've actually been working on several dolls at once to maintain the schedule, but I'm definitely going to be doing my best to make sure it's not too long before the next video. So let me know what you think in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching. For the rest of the video, just enjoy the photos.
Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!